Good morning and welcome to our Live Talk program. This is Lord Grubb here, your host on Revive Reform Radio, doing our Live Talk program, covering motivation on this here Monday morning, rise and shine and give God the glory. And this morning here, we're looking at a very interesting topic. We are given raw materials to work with to create value. We're given raw material to work with and create value. And this is our motivational meditation and inspiration for this morning. So welcome. Hope you had a blessed weekend. You're ready to take on um, the challenges of this week and whatever you have to cook and make and um, create. Um, may God bless you in this endeavor. Let us pray. Our Father, Lord, in heaven, I thank you again for your word. I thank you, dear Lord, for the way you continue to guide us. And as I look at these things, I pray to me, bless my mind and the minds of those that are here. Um, by that spirit, we pray for Christ's sake. Amen. So we're looking at this very interesting thought here, which is we are given raw materials to work with um, to create value. And so this is what it is. So the precious ore are a very different type of ore metal. A lot of time we say ore, we a lot of time things about think about um, iron ore, but the precious ore is in the soil or in the ground. Um, the seed must be planted problems must be solved and the word must be heated or applied and so these are all raw materials that god give us we do not create we're not creators so to speak but we can take something and invent something or make something or duplicate something or create a solution and in all of this activity however you work you work in deed or you work in words um, your actions um, is to, or your task is to create an end product, a solution. That's all we do. We just create solutions. And in those solutions, this is where value is created. And so I want to explore this thought with you here this morning. As you start off your work week, uh, you're going around, going about to basically increase your value um, or increase value in somebody else's life. But whatever you're doing is, is any work is always has to do with something here that I just mentioned. It is you, you're producing food or you're producing food and then somebody's going to take that raw material and produce a end product or you're solving a problem or you're working in the word or you're working in the soil, whether it be to get the iron ore and then somebody use it to make a way for the train to move to care people. Whichever way, it's all raw material that is already there. It's something that God has already put. We're not creating raw material out of nothing. We're taking something and making something else. We're looking at nature, see how it works, and we're trying to duplicate it. And this is where value comes from. So value is not in per se the raw material per se, um, because that's already there. And it's, you know, it's somebody could have access to it, but you still have to go figure out how to get that crude out of the ground and make petroleum products from it um, and that's that product is what people want because it creates a solution the crude in itself um, it has value but the value is not as significant as what it is so in our task this is our task that we're given and I start off here by looking at 2nd Timothy chapter 2 verse 14 through 16 2nd Timothy chapter 2 verse 14 through 16. Notice here it says here, of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the errors. So it's important, don't get in back and forth with people about words that um, um words that have no profit or to no profit. See the Bible is raw material again. It's the word of God is there and it can be a dead letter. It can be a live letter. It's alive when the word becomes flesh, where you flesh it out, as they say, when you make it become applicable to your daily life. And so he says, don't get involved in this. And this is why, if you listen to me, I try to always stay on the practical. Why? Because the word is given to us for our benefit is not is not there to educate angels. Angels can talk to God and ask him. A personal question if they need to the word of god is given to us down here in this quarantine zone and so the word of god should not be you go back and forth people with stuff that's not going to profit this is why suddenly you can get into certain things and when you think about it you're like man i don't even need to talk about this because it's not going to profit now by god's grace if you listen to me for the next hour 
um, it will be quite profitable. At least this is this is, and if it's not, tell me because I'm telling you this is well, very well profitable. Um, so the word of God um, is supposed to be profitable, and yet those who don't listen to profitable words, and when you go back and forth with people that's profitable, it subvert the errors, it mess them up, it overthrow them in the practical, and give them an impractical religion. Can't you read in here verse fifteen? It says, "Study to show thyself approved." Unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So you can wrongly divide the word of truth, but when you rightly, you will be a good workman. So that's all we are when we approach the word. We're just workmen. We're going in there digging, and there, are, you know, there are ores in there. There are seams of gold and stuff like that. But it can be seem like it's buried because it's there. It's not at the surface. Surface readers, as you know. They're not anchored, they're unstable, and they will always subvert the word and end up subverting themselves. But everything that God gives us is still, we have to work with it, it's material to work with. And so, again, even like I'm doing this talk here, I'm, I'm basically digging and I'm putting together, a, 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 you know, a, a seams of gold, a text here, the Bible says, here a little, there a little, and you put it together. And it makes a hole and it makes a beautiful hole. And by God's grace, it will add a value to your, life, into your life. This is me talking practically. And so if you look at this, it's, it's, it is the truth that we're digging for. And it has to profit those who are digging for just stuff to just dig for stuff. It's unprofitable stuff. There's so many false doctrines out there that at the core is false and it is despotic and crazy. But really at the core, you know, the problem is it doesn't do anything for the person that studied. You know, there could be a person that spent 20 years studying something and at the end of the day, they're, they're worse for it. They're not better. It doesn't add no value to their lives. So this is what we don't want. So no, but notice it says, shun profane and vain babbling. I mean, it's useless. It's just talk, a lot of talk for no reason. For they will increase unto more ungodliness. So vain babbling doesn't make a person become less godly, make them worse. So if a person starts studying and 10 years later, they continue with this nonsense um, that has no value. It makes them worse. But when you are there, you're working with a material, you, you, you're studying the word of God. It is, a, and you're doing a practical study, real life study. It is phenomenally valuable. And so what we're doing is that we're, given raw material but we work with it to create value and whatever work we're doing in the word in the soil in the beneath the soil above the soil whatever work we do what all we're doing is we're creating value and the the raw, raw material is not the value per se it is a value that is already existing but it is a limited value it is the material when it is used it's, it's like this you go into the earth you dig they dig for gold it there is it's of value, but it's of limited value. But when taken out and extracted and cleaned up, it is of much more value. But when taken and turned into a jewel, a jewel or a piece of practical material to be used in um, certain specialty industries, enough is it's of immense value. So at every stage, somebody's just working with what you consider raw material. You know, the person of a field. And um, the person decided to grow some wheat. The field is of value. The seed is of value. But the moment they harvest that wheat, it is of much more value. You can buy year and year out. You can pay for maintaining and, and make profit off the, the wheat berry. But then somebody take that wheat berry and then make just some regular bread. And that's of even more value per pound. But if somebody can make some artisan and some very exquisite type of material from the bread. And now that can be of even immense value. It's the same same wheat, but at every stage, one thing become another raw material for another raw material. And the end product can be can add a lot of value to your life. So when you go out this week, that's all you're doing. You see yourself as a person that just add value to raw material. You're working with whatever is there to work with to create value and the value that you create is not only for yourself but it's for those who are receiving whatever you're creating and you take pride in a positive sense 
for what you're doing. So we are given a lot of raw materials in life. We are raw materials, so to speak. You know, we, you know, as we birth, we don't know really what will happen to a child when they're birth. But as there's input that is put in, and as they process that input and they come out, some people come out to be immensely valuable. Some people come out to be natu national treasures. You know, there's human beings walking today that they add so much value that the society and the country look at them as a national treasure. Other people, they, 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 they are a national disgrace. They basically so bad that sometimes they don't even want to put them in prison. They just want to execute them because they're just, they, it's just, it's even too expensive to have to maintain security around them because they always want to kill, kill prison guards and police and stuff like that. They're so dangerous. So it is, it is that thing, but it is all raw material. It's just what you make of it. In Proverbs 13, verse 23, Proverbs 13, verse 23, it says, Much food is in the tillage of the poor, but there is that is destroyed for want of judgment. Beautiful. There's much tillage in the, in the, the tillage is when you prepare the land to grow crops. So the poor would have the land, it, it is obvious, or at least in the land. And the poor already went out there, and the poor went and tilled the land. But, the, but much food is in the tillage of the poor. So much food. So somebody said, well, there's no food in tillage. Why would he say that? If you're not thinking, you would say that. But if you understand the process it is the, the process doesn't stop at tillage. The process doesn't stop at even throwing in the grain in the soil and covering it and let it sprout. The process process continues. For want of judgment, much is destroyed. There's there there's that that is destroyed for want of judgment. Because there's more than just digging up the ground, till it makes some rows, drop in some seeds, cover it. And then walk away. You might get some value back out of that because you did some work. But at every stage of the game, how you handle certain um, crops or whatever is going to grow wild in the field, that's going to affect the, 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 the whatever you put in to reap. You know, so let's say you put in grain. And if you don't go out there and weed and try to deal with the herbs that are going to suck nutrients out of the soil. Um, if you don't know how to probably build some irrigation system, how to do some composting, how to do other things, then there's much food there, but it's not going to be um, um, you know, realized. There's much value there, but the value is not going to be realized. You have to be able to work with it. And so, as you go to your work week this week, this week, this is how you think about life. There's much value there, but you have to put in some extra work. And the person who is better at that, the person who is more fine-tuned with the wisdom that it takes to be able to get more yield and greater yield, that person is going to have more value because that person will have more to sell. And if the farmer decide. That poor person decided, and not only I'm going to till it, but now I'm going to have a side business, and I'm also going to start make some bread with this wheat that I'm selling. Um, then there's really much food in it. There's really much food in it. Um, I take this so serious because um, I've come to a point where I can literally have stuff in the cupboard, stuff in the fridge, all raw material, the end product for the farmer selling it to the supermarket. There's a hand product for the supermarket. You know, supermarket sell both. There's a raw material and, and end products. But I'm talking about I go primarily to buy raw material. I don't buy a lot of the end products. And um, and you can go into the fridge section of my fridge. So not the freezer, not my cupboard, but the free fridge section. And from the bottom up, if you look from the bottom up, uh, it can be full, so the first two drawers at the bottom, full, with raw material. So, you know, onion, garlic, um, cabbage, carrots, full. And then the second layer, I have, third layer up, I have a lot of grain products, you know. So, stuff that I don't need to put in Ziploc, so I keep it in the fridge. 
So I don't have to deal with weebles and stuff like that. And then from that layer up, the next three or so layer up can be quite empty at times. You could go in there and it's empty. There's nothing there. So the freezer is full, the first three layers full, the cupboard full with raw material. And I could spend a few hours and I could start running out of space making end product. Now, I can do the end product. I can do a whole bunch of end product in a few hours. And I can count the cost of those end product and know that if I had to buy a half a tray or a full tray of food, it would cost me anywhere from probably 40 something to a hundred and something dollars a tray, vegan food I'm talking. You know, and that's the person, they're going to make it and they're going to have, they're going to give me the end product and um, a food. But I can create all that end product within a few hours. And I can sit there, I can say, well, whatever this is, this is could be a few hundred dollars worth of food. And I know I just save myself between the cost of the material and my labor a few hundred dollars, literally, in just creating the end product. But that's the same thing if you're working in a restaurant or if you're working in a food production um, facility, you're creating an end product and the person pays you and, you know, beside material and any type of cost of production, the other value is your labor and your labor could be $5 an hour if you're not doing well. It could be 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, you know, whatever dollars an hour. And that's your benefit. And you can create that and create your own industry within your house and save yourself some of that money. And another person will go and they'll go and they pay for the end product. And you can be like, I know if I buy all this raw material, I can make that same juice from concentrate. Because a lot of time you go and buy juice, you're buying from concentrate or some chemical soda. So you can be like, I make my own juice from concentrate. And as a matter of fact, I'm throwing some fresh stuff and I make some of it that is not from concentrate. And I make a gallon of it and I know if I had to buy the same gallon, it would cost me this amount of money. If you have the time, now if you're being paid a hundred and something dollars an hour, you never have the time to do what I just said. Because whatever your end product is, it is quite valuable. So you got to spend all your time there and then pay somebody to create that end product. But this is basically what it is. So in the same way, much food is in the tillage of the poor. Because the poor could be poor because when he finished after he till and he put it in and he does nothing else and he reap. It probably calculates all the work he did. He calculates and all the misjudgment. He ended up losing so much value because he didn't have the production that he worked on that he made $10 an hour. And he really needed probably $12 to really survive. So now he has to go to the food pantry downtown, collect some food. Why is he going to the food pantry downtown, collect some food? He need to be listening to me this morning for me to show him that he's making mistakes in what he's doing with his production. He could increase his production by a percentage and he probably get $15 an hour. Now he doesn't have to go to the food pantry. So you can imagine a person is a poor farmer. And you hear these stories all the time. A person is a farmer and they have lack. And I'm like, why do you have lack? You have farm. Oh, I just grow this wrong one crop. Man, why are you growing one crop? Man, create some other stuff and grow some other stuff and make some money somewhere else. Find out what the market is demanding and grow that and stop growing just one type of crop and just don't grow crop grow something and go make something somebody's gonna pay you for that value and so this is where we approach life that sometimes the tillage could simply be as i say just going out there and buying your own almonds remember if you go out there and buy like an almond milk since that's probably one of the biggest trending things right things right now um probably the, the most expensive probably five dollars a quart on um, almond milk I think we'll care, care, I think, 11, I think 11 almonds, right? So that's, uh, I think it's about that. It's probably even less. So 11 almonds in one of those quarts. So you think about that. So if you if you go out and you go buy, um, I, I think it's like about six or something a pound is almonds, You know, so almonds is about six dollars something a pound, seven dollars something a pound. I think something like that. So when you think about it, you can, for basically a whole pound of almonds, which you can make a few gallons at that level of 
of almond milk. If you have some time, so if you're poor, you know, this, this is what I'm talking about especially, because any principle to me is only as good as if it can be, but it can bless a poor person. Because a rich person always have a whole bunch of options. They don't even need to listen to this, per se. Um, they'll just take this on steroid and they can create more value because the philosophy is so powerful. But if you take this, I'll show you how practical this is. So if you take um, 11 almonds in a quart, and that's your, 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 your um, what do you call it, your top of the value almond. I can't get the word. But anyhow, the top of the value almond milk you can find in the store. The best thing, artisan almond. You get 11 almonds in that quart. You take that gallon and you could put 44, literally, in that quart. You just splurge now. You're just living large. And you drop a quart of, of water, so you're going to even end up with more. You throw some sugar. You you throw some, probably you throw some carrageen in. And it's just literally Irish moss. It's going to probably make it taste bad. You have to go soak it a little bit and get the salt out. Or you throw some other, whatever thick, thickener you want. You don't even need thickener at that point because you have so much almonds in it. And then you add probably a pinch of salt. You add some vanilla. You get some organic vanilla from Country Life, Country Life Foods over there in Michigan. And you get some organic vanilla. You blend it. You can start drinking that thing like a drink. And if you want a little whatever, you want you want anything else, whatever you want else in it, whatever is in the box that you would normally buy. And all of a sudden, you have a quart of almond. And what it took you to just put it in a blender blend and put it in the fridge, you can drink it at a higher rate. And it's four or five times more, you know, healthier, fresh. It will only last you a few days because it's not cooked. If you want to pasteurize it, you just put it on the stove, cook it. It'll last you probably seven days or close to that after you after you put it in the fridge. And if you want to make it, if you want to like make batches of it, you can just make batches of it and just freeze it. And then tie it and use it from different containers. And you'll find you'll be ahead of the game. You'll have it in a, in a more sanitary, safer container and so forth. Less production, less manufacturing process. If you have time. So if a person says, well, Lloyd, I'm not rich. Well, probably but you don't need to be rich. You don't need to be poor, definitely. You need to use your head. And start to think, wow. Because you have time. And if you're not making a certain amount of money per hour, you can add value to yourself because now that bag, that one pound of almond can give you so much soil milk that every time you make a quart, you just save yourself two, three dollars. How long is it going to take you? You just add two, three dollars, whatever, whatever it is, whatever type of almond milk you buy. You just add to your hourly rate and that's hourly savings, but you're getting a better value. And you can add a little flavors and, you know, you can splurge a little bit. So this is why there's... Um, there's much value missing in the tillage because it's there, but the work is not there. Somebody said, well, you know, I have a weak blender. Well, the amount of money you could save just by making your own, you could end up buying one of those two, $300 blenders on eBay. Just buy a used blender with some warranty from Blendtec. And, you know, you could get it for two, three hundred dollars hundred and something dollars you get a Blendtec blender with a good amount of warranty. And you use that head. And all of a sudden now you start doing things like that. And you start to find that it's worth the effort. Because that's $100. That's $1,000. That's $2,000. That's more savings. You can't get very good at this. So I say I can apply this up and down the ladder. And I will as we go through this next hour. So again I'm looking at we are given raw materials to work with to create value. Value is not something that it is beyond the, the intrinsic value that God put in you and I and put in the soil and in the air. But we are given raw materials. And we are raw materials. The earth is raw material with all that it, it embodies. But God gave us an intelligence to work with it. And no man needs to suffer or not need to prosper if they understand this principle. And so that's why we get, you get up today, all you get up today to do is create value. That's all. Every day you get up, you get up to create value. Somebody say, I get up to have fun. Um, you shouldn't be listening to me. Or if you listen to me, you should change that mindset. You get up to create value in people's life. And that's what brings the joy of life. Now notice here, um, mindset is everything. 
that you could be in a place where there is an abundance of raw material, raw materials, and you're dirt poor. Think about that. You could be in a place where there's an abundance of raw material and you're dirt poor. Dirt, you know, just poverty stricken. Can't make, make it, you can't even starve in. And there's abundance of raw material. Uh, sad reality is when I think about this, uh, I think about Congo. Uh, this, is the th this is the word picture. I can see the map in my head. And I can say whatever that map is, it's like somebody draw around. and said this spot here in the middle of Africa, it is rich in resources and people are not doing well. Now, there's various different reasons for this. But ultimately, when you think about it, it's just still a fascinating thought that you could be you could be in a place where there's just riches everywhere there's raw materials everywhere and you're dying for want of it you're di just think about you know I always think about you know like they always say dandelion and certain herbs you know broadleaf herbs will herbs will take over like your lawn but you think about the various different uses for dandelion and that line they say always grow where human beings are. It's almost like God says, they need you. Just, just pop it, go where they go. Wherever they go, they put put a house down, just grow in the yard. Like you're telling them, eat me. And that the line is so good as something to purge the blood, feed the blood. That the line is good for various different ailments. That the line is good. They use the that line root um, for a coffee substitute. It has so much good use. And you see this, this is raw material. It's literally like people want to get rid of it from the lawn. It's garbage. It's, it's a pest. But yet, it's a healing herb that has very good use for healing and has value. There's people who make good money off that line. Just planting it in and selling it, selling it as a herb. I sell it as a herb. Um, that line is great. But if you think about it, that line in itself is, is just a waste. And yet, that's just the, the whole idea that you could you could be in the abundance of raw material. Raw material is basically trying to over, over, overthrow you, overcome your lawn, and yet it's there. How many people are dying of all kind of ailments, and they have red clover blossoms? You know, red clover plant, red red clover blossom all around, and they need to pick up pick some of those red clover. And go make some tea and go get rid of their their cancers and various different strange diseases. It's all around. But it is useless if you're in the wrong mindset. And you're looking at it and you're like, man, I'm dying. And you're looking at the solution and thinking, yeah, not only am I dying, my yard is being taken over with this red clover. And that's the raw material the person needs. But you can have to do something with it. Um... I've experimented taking red clover in large quantities and it can really cause a problem. But, you know, it's great for like making teas or use it for extracts to get the nutrients out of it. <laughs> but, you know, I try these experiments. But it's, it's it's your same thing. You have this thing called planting. It's one of the most powerful things for like bug bites and for itches and stuff like that. Planting the herb. And it's growing in most people's yards in North America. It's just always, you know, it's always want to take over your lawn. But that thing is, sometimes I get a bite, I just go outside and I just I would probably chew a little bit, pick some leaf and chew it or crush it up in my finger. I start just trying to squeeze out the green sap or the green chlorophyll out of it. And it just ease the bite. Beautiful. It's raw material, but it's great for the skin. One of the best things for the skin, especially when it's, mosquito season but yet it is something that it is not of value it's something that you could ignore all day you could never know what it's there for uh, you just think it's just something trying to destroy the lawn so you could be the if the mindset is wrong and you don't have this mindset to understand you're here with a brain and muscle and you're here to create value you get up today you're going to work you're going about your task whatever your task is today you're there to create value for yourself and for others. And for that, life will reward you and life will be more rewarding. That's the idea. You're not just there to take, you're there to create value. Now, the result of creating that value is that you're blessed. You're blessed with money, you're blessed with something because somebody appreciates the value and they transfer value to you. 
because you're creating value. But really, what's your dearest to do value, create value? A car is just a value. You know, you buy a car, you're buying something that's of value. Why? It's of value to you because it can take you to work and play music for you at the same time. So you can be going to work and you can connect your smartphone to your Bluetooth and you can listen to me while driving to work. And that's value. So you can receive value from listening to me, but you can do it in the comfort of your warm or cold car, wherever you are at this point where you're listening to me. That's value. And so you say, I'll pay somebody, I'll work and create value to pay somebody to add value to my, my life. This is all work is. Now, if you look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 4 through 10, Genesis 2, verse 4 through 10, notice it says, these are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. And there was not a man to till the ground. So the Lord had created a different system. Most naturally, the earth would have not been populated at the creation of the earth and then Adam and Eve. And so the Lord had, to, had a different system to keep the earth moist. Very important. So what does that tell you right there? It tells you that um, tilling the ground and irrigation system is logical after the fall, after the, especially after the flood, because everything changed. Now there's going to be rain. You're going to have to be able to control the water supply because sometimes it rains, sometimes it doesn't. But if it constantly missed in the morning as what is being described here, then sure, you would not need that irrigation system. But today, you could have no rain for a while. The weather pattern, especially in our last days, seemed to be very um, unpredictable. And then you have too much rain. So you say, hey, look, let's let do some have some people called the Army Corps of Engineers, and they are here to help deal with this um, fluctuation, deal with this inconsistency. Um, so you, right there, the text tells you already that even when it comes on to um, farming, you have to till the ground because you have to have a way to create channels, to create beds, to create all kind of stuff like that. So as the rain fall, you can control the irrigation and all that. That's the beauty of what we are created for. So we have the intelligence to do this. We have the intelligence to readjust. So somebody comes up and they come up with an irrigation system that is brilliant. And somebody say, we're going to make you rich. You'll be comfortable for the rest of your life because you created a solution that adds value and it will, and will increase my production. So you and I, we are here to create value. We are here to create solutions. We are here to help people. We are here to bless people. And as we do this, in whatever capacity we do it, we're just adding value. That's all we're here to do. And that's what we're creating. We're like little honeybees. We're just intelligent honeybees. We just don't create honey. We create all kinds of solutions to bless our fellow human beings. You know, somebody have a problem. Somebody's depressed. What they need in their life is somebody who's going to create some joy in their life. Somebody's confused. They need somebody who's going to be stable. Stability can be a great asset. It can be a great value. In a world where there's so much unstable people, you need people who are stable. Stability is just, it's just another thing that you create. It's just a value. There's just so much value in this world that we're supposed to be creating. And notice here in verse 6 it says, But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. So this was the irrigation system back then. It changed after the fall of humanity, after Adam, well I should say after the, 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 the flood also. Now notice here, and God and the Lord, well, let me get this, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put man whom he formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. And there, and the tree of tree of life in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and a river went out of the Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted, and it became into four heads. We don't have this river anymore, so we do bottled water, we do filters, we do all kind of stuff. Every type of these things that men do, they're just creating solution. Um, 
this is I say this like I have a filter system if you go to revive reform you can see on the forum there that I posted the filter system and I realize I need realize I need to change my filter system because I need a, a way to filter through the sediments without a filter I need to do a pre-filter on the sediment I don't have a pre-filter and um, so I was just went online just looking for a pre-filter I always assume that these things are out there in abundance and I kind of know it was there but a pre-filter that is washable, I can backwash it, clear it out. So it, I don't have to change a filter that I have to buy. So something that I can use and clean without having to always buy a new filter when I need to do that. But that's somebody just create a solution. And now I view that if I have to make that, it would take me too much time. I have a time for that. The thought is there, but the time, time wouldn't be there. If I made it, then I would have to take it and pat it and take it and sell it. Because I know other people would have the same problem. And that's all it is. We come up with a solution. Somebody ha sees it and somebody says, not only am I willing to pay for the material and the ingenuity, but I'm willing to pay for the time production. I'm willing to pay to get it to me. I'll pay for shipping. Get it to me. I want it. And you can take the profit. Because it's, it's like a, it create a, it's fix a problem. But in the garden, they didn't have to worry about filter water. They could just go to the stream and drink. Uh, this is not the reality today. We don't have this. So we have to come up with solution. And when it comes to solution, we add invite to ourselves and to others. Um, also, we find there that they had every tree. But we were fruitarians when we were created. So today, how do we have to get our fruits? We get our fruits. We do fruit juices. We do fruit dry fruits. We do sprayed, dried, powdered fruits. We do all kind of ways to get our fruits because the fruits come and then they go. There's a season. The season is affected by the cold. Depends on where you're at. The season could come and your favorite fruit only come for two months. So we come up with all kind of ingenious method where we can grow the food and then move the food production to warmer areas. Move the food production to the south and the north. So sometime in the south there's fruit producing, sometime in the north there's fruit producing. And that system has created where we can get fruits for any specific fruit, probably 10 months of the year. Probably that's the most they've pushed it. 10 months for the year. Within a period of 10 months, probably the month of January, February, you probably can't get certain fruits. And vice versa, probably August, July, August, you can't get certain fruits, a specific fruit. But this is how broad they've broadened by just moving along the continents from north to south. The fruit production, fruit production. Some fruits they just only can be grown in very um, hot climates. They're very tropical. Um, so when you look at this, this is where our mindset is. So when you get into this mindset, if a person say is in a place like Congo or the anywhere where there's a lot of raw materials, um, the ingenuity is what is needed. It's not the glorification of the raw material. Because you could be broke and starving and you own a farm. And so the farm is not the issue. You could have all the farm you want. But if you don't have the the, the, the mindset to work and the, the willingness to figure out and to learn from others, the ingenuity to be able to produce a lot from your tillage, you're still going to be broke. You have to be able to have the drive to work and you have to be able to have the, you know, the, apply, the willingness to apply the ingenuity to work but here you find that adam and eve had all kind of raw materials but they lost their high standing and all they have to work for it god says because it seemed like you're too idly you had too much time you had but that's what it is there's a lot of people as i say are poor they're not poor because they're disabled uh, or they're older physically frail and they can't work it's just they they just either don't have the drive to work or they don't understand that raw material has to be worked with. And sometimes raw material is just their muscle. They just have raw muscle, they need to use it. Now, if you go with me to Isaiah 51 verse 3, Isaiah 51 verse 3, and again, we're looking at, we are given raw material to work with, uh, to create value, just raw material. Something you rock with materials is a computer. As a matter of fact, interesting enough, a few years ago, talking about computer, a few years ago, this, they came up with this thing called cryptocurrency. And these currency are currency that are some type of software that was written to do a code to create currency. 
and to create the currency was a lot of production when it comes on to running um, the software program to be able to come up with a Bitcoin. That's what they call it. So the Bitcoin rose in value, but to produce it, you'd have to have a computer with like a gaming software, um, I think video processor and other things. So it's high speed to be able to run it, run it, run it 24 hours. You produce a coin, somebody buy it and they use it as cryptocurrency, as they call it, to do certain transactions online that they don't want to be tracked or traced. And people use their computers to make a lot of money to mine these bitcoins it's like a, you're using a video game type of processing to instead of make it having fun to mine and to create a, something to sell it to others that somebody sees as great value because they want to buy probably drugs or prostitution or something they want to buy online but they don't want to be trackable and they see that as great value so somebody created a value for them even though it has a lot of time was used for nefarious purposes but it has value so you think about it, it's, it is simply a tool, but somebody could use it and say, no, I'm going to buy some software, I'm going to do some work for somebody. And you're creating value. And that's all the value. It, that's all it is. And that's what we're here for. We're just like little bumblebees. We just create value by creating solutions for people's problem or creating solutions all day for people's problem or to increase production. Notice in Isaiah 51 verse 3, it says, And the Lord shall comfort Zion. And it will comfort all her waste places, and it will make her wilderness like Eden, and her deserts a desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein, thanksgiving and the voice of melody. So that's our mindset. You see, our mindset is it it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm more and more in that mindset where, you know, where you're gonna buy. It's nice to buy a finished house. And nothing wrong with that. You're paying the contractor and all the workers. They're due. The house is finished. They have got rid of a lot of headache for you. And you have a house built from scratch. It's brand new. Um, as I say, been there, done that. I understand that. Um, but also, I'm, I like the idea. And I did a lot of this type of stuff um, from one point of view, without me explaining, um, where you go and buy something that is junk. You know, something that is a house that is... Um, you know, you can get a CO for a uh, certificate of occupancy. And so you go ahead and buy it and you pay some people, you do some work, as they call it, elbow grease, and you fix it up and you create value. And so now you put up some new electrical insulation, sheetrock, and you paint it. And all of a sudden, that junk looks very good. I love that type of project because this is how I see it. I see that. Many times we want it all ready made, but when ready made, you're paying somebody else for that value. But when you create it to certain where you restore it, you're putting in value, and somebody will look at it and say, "I want that. I'll pay you for what you just did. You just got rid of my headache. You got rid of a lot of headache for me in the future. I I think this is a value to me, and this is how you look at it. This is how God works. God wants to always take a sinner, and God see value in the sinner." but not as they are. He just says, look, I like you as you are per se, but not to stay as you are. I want to fix you up. I want to do a fixer up on you. I want to do, what they call it, like a, a remake, remake, uh, something like that, where they do a, a makeover. That's what it is. And that's what Christianity is supposed to be. God is supposed to make, do a makeover on it. But people come and people are like, oh no, I just want to be saved by grace. I don't want to make over. And why? Oh, I'll take it in heaven. Why? Why don't take it right now? Just take it. God's going to make you brand new. Take it. He's going to give you a taste of what heaven is going to be like. It's a percentage. He's giving you a deposit. Take the deposit. But the moment we start to learn of Christ and we start to reflect Christ, we start to see the value in this. I know that Amish does this. I don't know if they do it as a philosophy, um, but um, the Amish do it. I don't know if they do it by accident or by philosophy, but they go in the area and they start to work the area. And it becomes nice. You know, they farm it and they do whatever it is with it. And they build their barns and they build their houses. And then the areas of value. And then people start to come in and encroach upon them. And then they'll take all the, they'll take the property, sell it, and then move on to more rural areas. And that creates more value. Now they're being paid that value because they put value in. And that's what is needed in any area where there's poverty is how to take what is already there 
and with hard work and some ingenuity and some figuring out of using the natural raw materials and some figuring out of probably importing and bringing in some other materials at a limited cost, you create value in an area and all of a sudden now that area is immensely attractive. But if you don't have the mindset to do it, as a matter of fact, you think about it, um, this is what the Dark Ages had created. It had created a, a, a reality where there was no value being put in because it, it was almost like you you don't reward um, ingenuity, creativity, freedom, um, aspirations and ambitions. You crush people's dreams because you wanted to control. But as the Reformation was hitting his strive via Martin Luther and other reformers. Also, ingenuity started to hit his strive because the less power the Catholic, the Catholic Church had in Europe is the more ingenuity started to come about. The ingenuity and the Reformation came hand in hand because why? People sort of have a different mindset. Oh, I'm here to create value. As I say, a bread is value. You know, a, 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 a bun is value. Value can just be simply just some food. A clean house is value. Um, you, you, a clean car. You could take me any car, and um, that has paint on it. <laughs> I'm not talking about something that's just a rust bucket. Um, and it's even some rust bucket that immense value because people sometimes like something that has an old patina. They call it. He has the old patina. It is never been resprayed. It's original and it's untouched. And it's still working. Uh, somebody says that's value. But also a card is painted. You throw all kind of sand and dust and dirt and salt on it and it looks terrible. You wash that thing off, it looks like, wow, that's attractive. That's beautiful. You can see a car 30 years old, 20-something years old, and it's resprayed and it's clean and it's so attractive. Why? Because it's clean as value. So here God is the one that will restore. God is the one that does this we won't need to be like god the flip of this is you know is the devil notice here in isaiah 14 verse 11 through 15 we find here it talks about the devil as one that destroys his philosophy kills you don't find a person the more any society i don't care where you go in the world and they go into darkness you don't find ingenuity Often people wonder why there's so much ingenuity that goes on even in the United States. And I really believe it's because of this is where the Reformation came to. And that's the reality of it. This is where it, it, it as Europe and England cracked down on freedom of thought, freedom of religion, freedom of the press, many people fled to America. And even though there was so much darkness going on in America, there's always this pocket that is crying out for freedom. And with that freedom comes the freedom to be able to do evil, but it's also the freedom to be able to be creative. And, you know, that's still what really makes America what it is. You know, it's the freedom. People believe, well, it's because of all the evil. It's not the evil that makes America great. It's their freedom to be able to have people to come and where they couldn't prosper in their, their, their former countries. They were able to come here and soar like the eagle. And that's the beauty. So in Isaiah 14, verse 11, it says, The pump is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials, the noise of thy voice, the worms is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nation? Still, this is what happened to this day. For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also in the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. So notice here, Lucifer wanted to take what already is established. I want to keep this in mind. This, this thought is very important to what we're talking about. We're given raw material to work with. Lucifer, there's an established kingdom, and Lucifer want to take it. I mean, think about that, right? Established, Lucifer want to take it. Remember, God now says, I'll make the desert become like a flourishing garden, right? Lucifer want to take the flourishing garden and take it over. 
you know, what I mean? you know what I mean? so it's, it's this is where covetousness and worthlessness comes from somebody see somebody pardon me so somebody see a person make build a nice house build a garden do whatever and they don't want to they don't want to um this is to me the devil's mindset they don't want to go build their own they should be inspired they want to be able to take over what somebody else has have or you could be in location and i've seen this a lot we're in a place and there's too much of this mindset exists and you have to leave that place because you're trying to be, do something good and there's somebody watching you not doing the work and they want to take it and there's no protections to protect you from evil doers like that now notice the flip here genesis 1 verse 1 2 and 3 we notice god's methodology in the beginning was uh, in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep and the spirit of the god moved upon the face of the, the waters and god said let there be light and there was light you see that's powerful see god comes and he will take something that is nothing and you make something of it and so god want you and i to be in that same mindset that we take raw material whatever is there bible said there was some water on the face of the deep there was no form of void it was probably like a big piece of rock it was not shapely you know people said the earth evolved from an explosion and they're saying all of this is an explosion and we have a sphere very very fascinating thought it, they're, they're magicians like that they're, they're father the devil but god here is like saying no there was a, a seemingly a pile of rock with darkness and water and god says i'm gonna start work with that and what that does it teaches you and me as you you well know that god if you're a pile of rock with darkness and filled with water hopefully it's not water because you have a water retention you need to change your diet and lifestyle but water god want to come and God want to change you and make you into something beautiful, something very spherical, something as shape, something of form that's not void, something that has stability, you're not empty. You want to put a nuclear reactor inside of you and then want to warm you from the outside with the sun of righteousness. So that's the obvious there. But when you look at this, it tells you the mindset of God. And it tells you the previous verse, the mindset of the devil. The devil want to take what is already there and... He want to just conquer it and, and what he ended up doing is destroying it. And that's what he tried to do in heaven and God is that to fight him out of there. I kick him, kick him out. Um, and so we need to be in a mind, that same mindset that we we love working with raw material. We don't want everything just put in our lap. As a matter of fact, we don't want everything put in our lap. I like like this way. The moment I learn this principle, I like, I need to work for what I have. I need to take people. That's why I believe in, as you know, I believe in independent church. Because I can go build my own. I don't need to go go into nobody's house at church and take it over. They already build their church. God bless them. They move on in life. They can have it. So you build your own. You establish your own. You work for your own. That's your reward in this life. We have one go around. And we don't know how long we go around. We have multiple go around this, the sun. But we, we do the best and we have an exploration. We have some excitement in our life. So this is what God does. Now notice here the flip of this. Genesis 4 verse 1 and 2 and then verse 8 through 10. So notice here um, it's notice here it says verse chapter 4 verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights he was afterwards and hungered. So you're hungry. Now this is physical hungry. But also Christ is hungry to save humanity. Now how is he going to go about it? devil said, Psh, you don't have to do so much effort. You're already weak anyhow. I'll just give it to you. You win. You can have them. But that was not Christ's method. See, Christ came. Christ went to the poorest. Christ first came 12. He went and talked to the richest and they rejected him. Well, they weren't interested, I should say. He went out to the poor and he worked with the poor. He's working with a harder class of people to work with. So look at this. He's fast and he's hungry. He's physically hungry, but I believe also he's hungry. As in he wants to, ex, you know, get some success. Now notice in verse 8 through 10. And again the devil taking him up and into an exceedingly high mountain and show him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. He don't show him the ghettos. He don't show him the favelas. He don't show him the rough side. He don't show him the trailer parks. 
he showed him the glory of them. So he showed him Manhattan. He showed him, you know, Times Square. That's what he's showing him. And he says now in verse 9, And he said unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Now to me as servants of God, I have always noticed the prophets, they'll, they'll, they'll build from scratch. They, they, not into, they go build their own. Not into conquering and take over. It is nice, I would say, to be able to get a seat at the table. It is nice to be able to get a kingdom that is already everything glorious. Because this is what he's showing. He's showing that says these, cities, these, these, these countries and these cities are filled with ghettos around them. He's showing the glory of them. And that's what people want. I'm sure it's nice to run for a state position and whatever and get, get a city to take over and run. But Christ didn't go it that way. Christ said, get in BME. Get out of here. Christ is not in that business, as I say. Christ is not going to be tempted by that. Because you understand, he's the one that through, all, through, him, all, through, all, through him, all things were created. And I see that it says, he'll take something that is a pile of rock, a pile of nothing, and he'll make glorious of it. And when we get into this mindset that God will work with raw materials, so to speak, God will work with, God is not coveting what somebody else has. God is not coveting the finished product. God can make something greater and God has greater. God is not tempted by this type of stuff. And we too, we go get our own. What I say, father have, mother have, but blessed is the child that got their own. We don't need an inheritance to be successful. We don't need a garden of Eden to be successful. We don't need a city to be successful. We don't need all the finished products to be successful. We can go build our own. The moment you have this mindset, you don't need a start. You don't need a, a foot up. If you get an opportunity, you take it. But if you don't get it, you don't worry about it. Because you're going to make your own way. You're going to fight for your own way. You're going to strive for what's yours. Because guess what happened? What's yours is what you took. When you took the raw material and you put it together and you make your own. You have to covet no man silver. You have to covet no man gold. You have to covet no man favelas or ghetto or trailer park. And you don't have to covet no man, you know, Broadway or 42nd Street or 5th Avenue because you go make your own. And when you have your own, you work for it. Guess what happened? It is glorious. And somebody will say, man, that's valuable. I, put, I, I, I buy that. I want that. And nothing wrong as a say if you can buy that penthouse in the sky. You nothing wrong to move on up, but I'm just saying you don't have to. And if you don't, if you cannot because you can't afford to, you don't worry about it. You're willing to work for it, and you're willing to use your brain and the cranium that God gives you to be able to do what it is because God gave you the philosophy. Now in Isaiah chapter 13 verse 12, Isaiah 13 verse 12, the Bible says, "I will make a man more precious than fine gold." Even man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Ultimately, what God is want to do with you is the same thing that you want to do for others and for yourself. Is you want to take that raw material and you want to make something beautiful of it. There's ore in the ground. There's beautiful seams of gold. But somebody have to go there and somebody have to dig it out. Somebody have to go there and clean it up. Somebody have to go and make jewels out of it. There's a process. And it's the same thing you apply to your life. You said there's still a process. I still have to go there and have to, something I have to make, take raw material that is messed up and filled with dross and clean it up and make a precious jewel out of it. And God says, you are my jewel. I'll make up my crowns with you. I'll take you and I'll make you precious. And so God will make you not only precious, but he will teach you how to make precious raw material or to use raw material and make precious things. This is what we need to do. So as I say, as you go out this week, no. That you're just basically, you're mining for bitcoins, you're mining for gold, you're mining for coins, you're mining to take something you have and increase it, improve it. And you'll find that value will be added and that's where value is. Because you have some muscle, you have some brain, and you have time, and you have some ingenuity, you can make the value. And that's what I hope this week you will do. And you will keep increasing value, you will find that you'll become 
more precious, not only in character, but in literal financial value. Let us pray. Our Father, Lord in heaven, I thank you for the blessings of your word. And this day, I pray that you may bless each and every one that was here, that truly, dear Lord, will be like thee. We reflect you in all your ways and will truly be precious like the golden wedge of offer to thee. May you bless us, dear Lord, and continue to bestow your spirit upon us. We pray for Christ's sake. Amen. Well, thanks again for being with me here on Revive Reform Radio. Looking forward to talking to you again live tomorrow morning where we go talk about the importance of church. Until then, I pray to make continue walk with the King. Mm -hmm.